Hi, Rob Ainbinder, Digital Dad, RobAinbinder.com. Today we're doing a unboxing and assembly video of the brand new Oklahoma Joe Ryder DLX pellet grill. I've been a fan and user of Oklahoma Joe products for over 16 years, and so when the team at Oklahoma Joe reached out to me and asked me to try out this new pellet grill, I was more than thrilled to do it. Now let's get down to the nuts and bolts of the Ryder DLX pellet grill. What I'll do first is go over a few of the things that I learned unloading the grill and then I'll, I'll loop you into just how much hardware is involved in assembling the grill. Um, a little note, it looks like assembly is pretty minor, but we'll find out as we dig in. The Ryder DLX pellet grill weighs in at 242 pounds. That's, that's this box. Uh, it has a 20 pound hopper and the box size, just so you know, can fit through a home's door and it fit into my Ford Explorer. The, the box, as received, was 46 and a half inches long, 22 and 7 eighths inch deep, and 29 and a half inches high. The box says that you shouldn't use a hand truck or a forklift to move this. I used a furniture dolly to bring it in from my car. Now, the hardware is pretty straightforward. This is the hardware pack as received with the Ryder DLX pellet grill. Big technical note, the instructions say this is a two-man job. I'm doing it myself, so your mileage may vary. So in this next step, what I've done is I've, I've, cut, it, I've cut the front of the box down and laid it down to expose the components. Uh, there's a few components on that, lay, that lay on top here. It's mostly the bottom shelf and a package that contains the wagon wheels. Um, what you can see here now is the cooking chamber. This is the controller here. And then there's a um, container to hold pellets included here as well. So here you can see um, the full breakdown of the way it's packed in, in the packaging. Uh, you can see the controller is, is laying on the ground here. That, that was why I laid, I broke down the box to provide a surface to work on. I'm working here in my living room because outside it's raining and I don't have a garage. So, uh, so the first step is to attach the controller to the hopper. And that's what I'll be working on. So I've pulled it forward out of the box. You can't attach the controller unless it's sitting on the ground apparently. So I've got to get this out of its styrofoam. I opened up the, um, the cooking area to see what was stashed in there. I've got some of these items to remove to use in later stages. Um, and that's, that's really my next step is get this out of the box, get it sitting on the ground. It's pretty close already, um, but I need to get this styrofoam clear of the ends so I can move forward with assembly. I've removed all of the parts that were stored inside the unit and that reveals the, um, the burn pot and, and the mode controlling and the way that this, that this unit works. It's a really interesting design and um, and we'll show you a little bit more after we get going. Uh, but really interesting to note the way this is set up. There's this cover, and then there's this really, really innovative venting system that happens around the burn pot. Um, I'm interested to dig into that a little bit more. I've got the unit cleared out, and there is a sticker here that I'm having to that slowed me down a little bit. It was a explanation of how the unit works. Um, you know, I know it's important at retail, um, but as far as you know, needing to get it off, it's kind of a high priority. And um, and I'm still I've still got it got a little bit left to go. Um, it's been more than a few minutes, but I think what my plan is is when I do burn in to really crank it up and and make sure any of this residual stuff like this adhesive and stuff burns off and then um, 
and then we'll be able to get into cooking pretty easily. So expect a little work on, on removing the sticker on the inside of the lid. So the next step in assembling the Oklahoma Joe Ryder Deluxe Pellet Grill is we need to get this unit on its end so we can add on the legs, bottom shelf, and wheels. So we'll be doing that next. Unit is, is now on its end. You can get a view of the underside. Uh, this, is, uh, this is where the, <clears throat> the hopper is. And then we have adapters for the legs, two grease buckets, and then, and then this is for ash management. This, this right here is ash management. We have something that attaches to that. Recommended tools for assembling this pellet grill. A Phillips head screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, a utility knife to open boxes, and then a pair of scissors to cut off all the tags. So we've got two legs with pins, and these are for the wagon wheels, and they go closest to the hopper. With the axle pins pointing out. So we've gotten all four wheels attached, We've gotten the bottom shelf attached. Now it's time to get it back upright again. We're going to attach the bracket that holds the bucket for the pellets and a quick, you know, few other touches. Okay, so I've wrapped up uh, assembly. Let me walk you through some of the major features. So I attached this, um, this bracket. This is the quick dump bracket. Um, and what, it, what happens is... Um, you put this, um, you put this bucket, put this bucket into it, and then using using this side release, watch this action. You release the pellets into the bucket below. So it's really easy to change out the pellets. These are the the main controls. You can do it by time or temperature you have uh, these are the high heat modes these are what gets you up to when you're direct grilling up to some 700 degrees down here is the smoke mode starting at 170 and then this is the off position there are two probes and there's these weather plugs for them very nice touch i thought you have um tool hooks provided. This is a great lifter for the grate and this handle is attached um, to put it between sear and smoke mode that moves a baffle inside. Uh, nice uh, side shelf here uh, for when you're bringing stuff out or bringing stuff in from a cook. Um, really impressed with the grates. These are these are cast iron grates extremely heavy, really stout, um, and they go inside the grill. This is the baffle, um, and inside here, down in there, is the burn pot. We have a drip tray here to bring the grease down at the bottom. If you didn't notice, there are two grease buckets. And then this is an ash cap, so this this screws off, and you can remove the ash, um, the leftover you know pellets that burnt off. Very interesting setup here to put these shelves in. They've got these brackets, kind of like um, closet system, and they hook in. in like that there's additional racks you can see that you can buy uh, that hook in the same way there's a rib rack I really like the way that looks that hooks into the same back hooks 
and then you've got a drumstick or a pepper holder as well. And then in the center area, you can they have these deep dish pans or griddles that, that fit right over the center. That goes in there like that, and there's one on either side. What else can I show you? There's two smokestacks. And what else did I do? This gets this gets screwed on. There's a screw and washer here and here. The wheels are the wagon wheels attached with cotter pins. And then there are two casters, real heavy duty, that get screwed into underneath there. And then back here. Nice thought out cord storage area under the quick change hopper. One, um, one probe is included, you can buy an extra one. So overall, um, very pleased with how easy it was to assemble this grill. And I'm really looking forward to grilling and smoking a bunch of food. Thanks for watching.